Uh, today begins our interviews with those who are running for office in the city of Martinsburg. And uh, obviously, you know, the May 14 primary followed by a June 11 city election doesn't give you a lot of time to focus on the city election. And we had so much focus on the May 14 primary, which was kind of all encompassing. Uh, so that uh, city election just kind of boom, it's right there, uh, right after the fact. So we are happy to uh, kick off interview season here on the city side with the mayor. Kevin, good morning. Welcome in. Good morning. Yeah, and, you know, people do tend to lose that uh, sight that there is another election here between a national primary and a national general election. And, um, you know, over the past, uh, I've been a part of city uh, elections since uh, 2008, that uh, the turnout is not that great because people think that they've already voted. I, mm -hmm. I was somewhere the other night and I was saying that it was right after the election and I had 45 people tell me, ask me if I won, and I had 11 people say they voted for me. <laughs> Well, I, th I thanked them all, <laughs> but also reminded them that uh, June 11th is, is, is the voting day. Actually, today starts off the Open, er, er, uh, early voting. Early yeah. voting starts today. So it's, yep. if you have an opportunity to go down and you want to vote early, you go down, go down to the, um, uh, the community room at the police station and, and cast your vote. All yeah. of the uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Real sorry, quick, Rob. Bill. Uh, two of the wards are contested, and then you've got the mayor's race, which is contested, and four council at large positions and i have uh via email text and telephone in some form or fashion communicated and attempted to communicate with all of those involved in running for election and extended invitations to be on this program uh, some have accepted some have not and there's nothing i can do about those who do not accept maybe they will before election day maybe they won't but the offer stands that's out there and that's um, all that i can really do as I've told people before, I don't have subpoena power to compel you to be on the program. Uh, we had initially hoped to do forums. Uh, however, uh, for most of the contested races that we try to do forums for, uh, that was impossible because you have to have two parties who agree to, part to participate in that, to have it as a forum. So because of that uh, lack of success, we switched to individual interviews which we are commencing with Mr. Knowles. Now, before we get into uh, that stuff, let's get into some mayor stuff and the recent arrest regarding the person involved in a bomb threat at a city council meeting. Yeah, uh, well, we had the, the uh, bomb threat at city council, last city council meeting that we had, and, and through the investigation of uh, Martinsburg Police Department, the state police and, and other entities, FBI, uh, they were able to track down the caller from uh, Texas uh, he was a uh, uh, he was a juvenile uh, and supposedly has had uh, four or five of those uh, those types of calls that he has made and uh, right now that they're continuing any investigation to see if there's anything else more to that because there there was a call made to him a few minutes prior and a call he made a few minutes after and and they're they're, they're trying to follow those clues if anything and, and you know it, it very well may be just a coincidence that it happened during our our city hall meeting when is the next meeting kevin uh june 13th so uh june 13th will be uh the next council meeting and we'll have uh several council meetings in june one one f to uh you know do the canvas for the election uh, and then another one to uh, finish off any uh, old business from uh, the current council and current current mayor to, and then uh, them swear in uh, all of the all of the above. Will you be taking any extra security precautions for this next meeting? Well, uh, yes. I mean, I think it, it, it would behoove us not to do that. That uh, you know, we want to make sure that. One, our elected officials are uh, safe. Two, that uh, our community and the people that are there uh, to speak on behalf of whatever they're there for to, to be able to feel safe also. So, yeah, I would imagine uh, that, that you would see a little bit more uh, security going into that, uh, into that room. That room is a community room, so it's, you know, it's not we're, – we're, we're still waiting on um, the finishing of our city hall. We've been renovating that now. Uh, well over a year, I think 18 months, and uh, and you know that's supposed to be coming online sometime, hopefully in September, and and we're looking forward to getting back into our own digs instead of having uh, remote uh, council meetings. The uh, Memorial Day weekend, and Maria and Bill will have some questions for you on that too. But Memorial Day weekend, uh, the Lambert Park pool 
uh, opening and situation? What do, what do we know? Well, I, I could tell you, i give you a quick story about Lambert Park Pool. Lam Lambert Park Pool last year did not open because of some things they said it couldn't open and that, uh, that they were looking at possibly um, never opening again. And, and so the city stepped in. Uh, we hired, we have a, a firm called CEC that we had them come in and do some renditions and of what, what, what could or what would fit well there in the future. And, and instead of making a knee jerk reaction and moving forward and, and taking on one of those, uh, one of those plans, uh, I, I asked, uh, the, the city administration and the, and, uh, CEC to go in one more time, uh, cause we had not inspected it. That inspection was done by somebody through parks and rec that I don't believe is there anymore, but, uh, they, uh, they, they're the ones that deemed that it was not, uh, not, not it be able to open. So, so we, I wanted to be sure because I had a meeting with people at Lambert, uh, up there, up there at Lambert pool close to there that, that, um, uh, some people in the community and I told them I said we're going to do everything we can to keep this pool open and have this open for uh, this this year and if we had not went back and looked at it, that pool would not be open uh, we went back and looked at it and found out that we were able to uh, fix the pool uh, is it a long-term fix uh, it's a it's a fix that's going to work for a few years so that we can take those plans that we looked at for any kind of expansion or anything that we would be doing up there at the, the rec center to be able to have a, an operating pool while we're uh, moving forward with any plans that we might have for uh, the rec center and or Lambert pool. So it is open. I, and I heard somebody made a big splash when they when they opened it. Well, that's good. Did so you dive in? I did. <laughs> Cannonball. Uh, Bill and Maria, uh, in regards to city business, anything that we've just discussed or any other city business, not candidate issues at this moment just yet, anything that you wanted to ask Kevin, Maria? So, Kevin, um, so you, you mentioned that there was a, um, you know, a separation, if you will, from what Parks and Rec was doing. Um, how did the city, number one, what was the cost of the, the renovations that you did? And... Um, does this indicate that perhaps the relationship with Parks and Rec is not as good as it could be? Or um, how do you feel that's uh, coming along? Well, I, I think Parks and Rec and the city have a great relationship because mm -hmm. uh, when this was all said and done and we went in to take a look at it, we worked very closely with, with current board, current management to, to may, be able to make this plan go through. So Joe Burton has been on the front end of everything that we've done up there at, uh, at, at Lambert Pool. The, the board has been on board, the city council, and, and, and everybody has been working very close together. There was, I don't, there was never a disconnect. Okay. Uh, but the Parks and Rec, just so clear to your listeners, that Parks and Rec is not run by the city of Martinsburg. Parks and Rec is not run by the county, Berkeley County. Parks and Rec is a, its own entity. Uh, do they get some funding from city and, and county? Yes, but most of their funding is through the, the hotel motel tax, and, and we don't have any, any, I don't want to say any say, we don't get into the day-to-day -day operations there. It is city property that uh, War Memorial and uh, Lambert Pool is on. So it's, uh, it's important that you know, we monitor that and we wanna make sure that the citizens on both sides of the city are getting the same value for, uh, for, the, for the recreation. But so you do the, make appointments. Yeah, and. Uh, yes, we do make appointments, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the price tag then was how much for Lambert and did the city pay for that entirely? The city did pay for that entirely. We mm -hmm. also paid to have renovations for the bathhouse. Mm -hmm. uh, it was over $100,000. I don't know exactly the, the final number. Uh, I don't think the final uh, final bill has been uh, processed yet, but it's uh, we we had put we had foresight uh, when we were doing our budget to put two hundred thousand dollars aside uh, for any type of uh, uh, project like this to help uh, move that forward. Kevin, let me pick up on a couple of points that Rob uh, asked you about. One, uh, for the election, the timing, the special election that's not part of the countywide election. There's been a lot of talk. But when you say years. special election, you're talking about the city excuse, election? Yeah, excuse me, I use the wrong term. The city election, sorry. Oh. The city election. And there's been a lot of talk over the years that it should be this, held the same time as the 
countywide election. Is there a statutory restriction from doing that? Or if not, why does the city have their election approximately one month after the countywide election? Well, it's in our charter, Bill, so it would be a, a charter change on our part or a or something from the state mandating it. But um, uh, the, uh, the, the, the city council would have to make a change on the charter, and that has not happened as of to this date. Uh, I think that you have some that that are in favor of it, and you have some that 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 aren't that would not be in favor of it. But you, you have low turnout. You invariably have low turnout. It costs money, which you pay for, uh, and uh, and it, and the way the ballot is set up, it could be a clear distinction. What is a city aspect or city vote as opposed to county vote? Uh, I know that I, I've heard in the past that it has been, the city council has to take action. I'm just curious why they have never chosen to take action. No, I can't answer for the ones that, uh, that, that, that aren't in favor. And I can tell you, I personally am in favor of moving it to uh, a, either a primary or the, uh, the general election. But uh, I, don't have, I don't have a vote. You know, and we've, we've had meetings three years ago. Uh, to look at the charter, and there was some some talk about it, and there was there was just no movement made for it at this time. Well, and what it would take then is a certain number of ballots at a certain number of precincts would have to um, have to have. It would be a different ballot It'd because be not everybody gets to to right. vote on on city council. Um, or city elections because you have to reside in the city. And I remember a couple of years ago, there was an issue with the ballot um, where there was a, a, a measure on the ballot and some people didn't get the correct ballot. So it takes a little bit of nuancing, I think, to make sure it's all right um, when you do something that's not for everybody so to speak well we we had that on the county recently for the county commission uh but those are those are legitimate mistakes they should not happen and that you that you mentioned nuances a ballot can be constructed in such a way that it could accommodate the cities and the counties agreed and, and the mutual yeah and i and i agree and I, we we did have a problem i think it was with our levy with our police levy that, that we had a that's problem what with. it was and uh you know Gina Long does a, a fabulous job on, on, on getting things ready for an election, and and uh, it, that would be a t uh, I don't know if that's an extra task that that would be for her. She would be more the the person to have a conversation with in depth as what would it take to to be able to combine them together. Uh, I I don't I think in the future that somewhere down the road you're going to see that happen, uh, but it's not happening for this an, election. An associated question is how much does the city election cost? Uh, I think the last time that uh, that I uh, was like thirty, thirty-five, forty thousand dollars. I was thinking it was more than that, yeah. but you may well be right. Okay. And, and, what's, the, what's the total city budget? And I could uh, I could be wrong. Yeah. 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 City budget is what fifty fifty two million. So thirty-five, forty thousand dollars every four years out of fifty fifty two million. Mm -hmm. Maybe, it, maybe it's worth it to keep it separate. Is it every two years, every four, every, every, every four every years, four, every two every years? Four years? Every four years. Every four years, okay. Let me shift another uh, another uh, question that Rob uh, asked, and that was the closing the courthouse or uh, closing the uh, uh, the county com uh, the city meeting due to the bomb scare. Uh, I assume there's a fear of copycat, one person picking it up. Are there a lot of instances such as this that we in the public only hear of the rare occasion? Do you know if there's a lot of instances? As far as, as other a, other city, other city, I, you yeah. know what? I have not. That has not been. I'm very involved with the state and other mayors, and and I've not heard uh, any rumbles of that. I've heard some some um, talk where in, in Charleston that. The mayor had to be escorted home, and the police had to stay out in front of her house for 24 hours. But nothing of of that 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 caliber. You mentioned uh, it possibly it was a coincidence. To me, that's it's really stretching the uh, tying all the knots together for it to be a coincidence. Well, I'm, I'm not here pointing fingers. Yeah, yeah. Kevin, in regards to this uh, teenager, so he's in Texas, and he picks out Martinsburg, West Virginia. Any idea it was the connection there? How would a kid in Texas even know where Martinsburg, West Virginia is to pick uh, this location to do this? I have no details to, 
one, I have no details to know anything about that, and I, I believe there's an ongoing investigation that can uh, um, clear that up down in the, in the future sometime. But uh, that's a good question. How, how would somebody just close your eyes and go to Martin? And how would you know that Martinsburg uh, Police Department is not 911? I mean, so typically those and calls go into 911 mm -hmm. in the county, but this is city dispatch it went to. And also another coincidence on that case, why would they pick a certain time when there was an, uh, some, let's say, uh, energy of concern with, the, uh, uh, with what you were facing that particular night? So all these pieces coming together really, to me, stretches the, uh, the coincidence. Yeah, and pl plus we got, I got also on, on that other end of that, too, Bill, is that he, they're in a different time zone, too. Yes. Mm -hmm. So he may not have known the, the time of what, what was going on or what could have been going on. You have some renters that are about to move in to the new complex uh, very soon in downtown Martinsburg. What kind of changes do you anticipate that's going to bring to the city? Well, I, I mean, that's that's huge. That whole area up there has been a $120 million um, investment. You know, there's not only 191 of those apartments coming online. And if you haven't had an opportunity to go up and take a look at them, they're fabulous. Uh, and they are affordable. Uh, at this point, they're affordable. And and out of that 191, I, I, I know of as of the other day that 80 of them have been, 80, 80 applications have been approved, so there's going to be 80 people moving in. Uh, those uh, move-ins, I believe, will start, if they haven't already started, by mid-June. Uh, and those individuals will start enjoying the pool and the other uh, amenities that, that that complex will have. It's just a... That whole area right now is, is it's blocked off on King Street because there's a lot of work going on with some stormwater management that that uh, Monument is going to be doing. And when they're all said and done with that, you're going to see new streetscape, new sidewalks, new new curbing, and, and it's going to be a, a beautiful area to, to as you're coming into the city. It's just a, another add-on of Upper King coming down into the city. Kevin, uh, what, are you, what are the demographics of the folks moving to these 191 apartments? Are they young folks, young folks, young family with kids, retirees, or what? Well, uh, the ones that, that I have talked to are, are, are the young folks. Mm -hmm. You know, they're the ones that uh, I, I probably have talked to about five or six. When I say young, Bill, anybody <laughs> under 66 to me is young. So, so I mean, uh, but, but these these individuals have uh, maybe one or two kids, and some of them are are, are just couples starting off that that have uh, decided they want to tr they want to live in the downtown atmosphere. They're very excited about being able to be there and, and you know walk into the stores, walking down to the the garage and and other things that that are happening that are starting to happening in the in the downtown area of Martinsburg and. You know, people talk about, um, you know, parking there, the, the parking. They have two parking lots, and they are, they're going to be putting an underground parking uh, spot uh, on one of the buildings next to it. So there's going to be quite, quite a few areas for them to park, so I'm, I'm, I'm not too concerned about the parking. You mentioned a part, uh, being affordable. What are the apartments? Rates? Well, uh, from my knowledge, if you were to rent a one-bedroom uh, apartment, uh, I don't know if that I'm not, I might be wrong. Studio or one bedroom, it's about thirteen hundred dollars, anywhere between twelve to thirteen hundred dollars. Now keep in mind, as I understand it, that includes your electric, your water, you know, your sewer. Every, you Utilities, don't have yeah. you don't have any bill. You don't have a you don't have a cable bill. You don't have a uh, a Wi-Fi bill, and it also includes the the, the pool. And also they're going to have a um, I don't want to say a gym, but a, a workout area that they're going to have, plus a community room and an on-site uh, restaurant. Yeah, I talked to somebody, I guess, last week uh, early on whose uh, daughter is moving into their, uh, an apartment there very soon and mentioned everything that was included in the rental price, which yeah, is uh, really pretty yeah, impressive. Yeah, I mean, I mean if, you, if you were to take the, the same, same thing, uh, the market value that, that, that's in the city of Martinsburg now, your one-bedroom apartments now are probably going for – uh, about a thousand nine hundred a thousand dollars. You add on that those other bills to it. Plus, you have to go out and do your laundry. Uh, here, there, you have your own laundry inside the inside your own apartment. Talk, uh, to change gears just quickly, talk a little bit about City Hall renovations, um, timeline for that. It feels like you all have been out at the strip mall for seven years. I know it's not that, but um, 
is the has the renovations been going according to plan um has it taken a little longer or um or what well i, I could tell you that uh, you know we have meetings all the time about the updates of city hall and and uh, there are some some hiccups that we had along the way there was some uh, some bad soil that we ran into and we started digging up so we had to do some remediation for that and and some some of the electrical parts were on order but f for whatever reason aren't going to be here on, on time because of back orders whatever and uh, as far as being up at the the strip mall it does feel like seven years <laughs> and uh, and it uh, to me it's like a disconnect you know it, uh, although it's been nice to be up there uh, I'm not, you know, we're not walking through town like we would on a daily basis. We're not uh, working with individuals on a daily basis. And, and I, I, it was supposed to be done, to answer the, whether it's on time or not, it's supposed to be done in June. It's not going to be done in June. And what's the time frame then? So we're, we're, we're hoping and praying for August, September. Uh, and uh, well, we all know how projects of that sort could take longer. But what 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 they've done in there is just phenomenal as far as opening that up and and having more space for us to be able to do business with individuals instead of having them come to the second floor it's now more f more customer friendly for people to come in and and just the administrative offices would be upstairs we switch to campaign mode with the mayor of the city of martinsburg kevin knowles coming up after the break in studio with the admiral bill stubblefield Good morning, Rob. Maria Lawrenson. Good morning. And the mayor of the city of Martinsburg who would like to, uh, I, I can't call it re-elected because he was elected as a councilman, appointed as the mayor following the untimely death of uh, Mayor Harriet Johnson, and uh, and then uh, now running for election as mayor. So, Kevin, good morning once again. Thank you for being here. In the first half hour, we focused on city business. Now it's time to shift into campaign mode. Kevin, why would you like to be uh, returned to the mayor's chair in Martinsburg. Well, first of all, I want to thank you for this opportunity for, to be here to talk about um, wanting to continue to be mayor. Uh, you know, I, I've been fortunate enough to be a city councilman for nine years prior to uh, being appointed by current council who saw fit to to make me the mayor for the rest of the term. And and uh, I've I've always had, uh, had it in my head that, that someday I wanted to run for mayor. And, and so... I, I was blessed with the opportunity due to the unfortunate circumstances of uh, Harriet Johnson, and, and, and now I want to continue to, to fulfill uh, the obligation of mayor. And, and, and I, think, uh, I think over the past three years uh, that myself and the city council has proven that we have a, a great ball rolling and we want to continue to move that uh, moment, momentum forward. What are the accomplishments of which you are most proud since you've served as mayor and and your time in city council as well? Well, I mean, right now we're still we're still under the uh, the city hall renovation project. We've uh, done the uh, Queen Street underpass. There's still some more work that needs to be done there. Keep in mind when we say uh, uh, Queen Street underpass, we have nothing to do with the road itself. Uh, the bridge, the walkways, and everything those are ours. The road itself is maintained by. Uh, the state, it's a state road, and, um, you know, we've seen a huge growth in our city's social media platforms, and uh, we have a, a public works expansion project going on right now. Uh, we have a, f we've done several improvements with the fire department. We've, we've, uh, we've given, uh, we've evaluated our, our, our wages for the city, and, and over the last few years have been able to implement over 15% increase in, in pay to bring uh, those levels up to to, uh, to a competitive level for uh, places in our area. Um, we have uh, done millions of dollars worth of uh, uh, road work as far as paving, and, and, you know, we continue to do paving on, on a regular basis. And, you know, the city... Our city engagement, you know, we've we launched a, a, a massive uh, text and email type platform. So if something's going on, we can get you could sign up for for individuals to to get the information quicker and faster. We uh, have uh, live streamed our meetings, which weren't be done in the past, and uh, we've been doing that for the last two years. And uh, we've seen over a hundred twenty-five million dollar private investment into the the city and worked very closely with the individuals involved in that, uh, you know, one being Monument, uh, the other being uh, the garage. The garage has now uh, opened up for 
uh, four months now, and they've seen, they've had um, over 65,000 uh, uh, receipts or people coming to their to their doors, and that's three times more than what the city of Martinsburg population is. And you know, we're the third highest total businesses have business license in the state, uh, and that, that's a huge that's a huge deal. And you know, very involved in uh, the um, the the state municipal league. I, I, I've been blessed and fortunate enough to be, uh, repre I represent the, the state of West Virginia's mayors and the Municipal League and the Southern uh, Conference, which uh, which I'm able to interact with mayors from uh, the southern part of the states to share our thoughts and their thoughts and ideas and what's worked for them and what can work in our area based on, on our demographics. And, you know, we've we've had balanced budgets since, uh, since I've been there since 2012 and you know, we've implemented, uh, we invested more than $9 million in ARPA funds back into the community. We didn't use those funds for, uh, for, for city purposes. We put it back into the community and uh, lots of economic development. We've, we've seen a 49% plus business growth since uh, seven, uh, seven, uh, 2021. So that's a, those are huge numbers that, that that we've been able to be part that I've been able to be part of. I've been able to be able to lead that 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 drive, and and you know I've been able to use the connections that I have made over the years as councilman and in other areas to uh, be able to work very closely with the you know the governor, the our state representatives, and our federal uh, elected officials. What are your biggest goals? if you are to be elected back to this position? Well, uh, my biggest goals is, uh, you know, one of the biggest contentions has been downtown that uh, uh, the sidewalks. I mean, you have know, some broken sidewalks here, and, and we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna fix all the sidewalks in the downtown corridor uh, so that the um, businesses and the business owners don't have to incur that cost because typically they would have to. Uh, we're going to see a different streetscape on, on Queen and some part of King Street, uh, plus what we're going to see is as a result of the um, uh, monument uh, stormwater work they're doing, we're we're going to start seeing the movement of the expansion of the trails. And uh, I want what I'd like to see is that that whole trail system and Creekside plan that we have put together come to fruition. Uh, we're hoping and praying that. Uh, at, in the middle or to the end of June that we're going to hear about the raise grant that we put in that can put all that into one bundle so that we can get that done quicker and faster. Otherwise, we have to piecemeal it together because it's a, it's a very high number uh, to, to be able to make that, that work, to, to be able to re, uh, reclaim our, uh, our, our creek but that comes through the, the city to be able to make it a place, to make it a destination, to make it something that individuals can can enjoy. And right now, there's it needs a lot of work, and, and we're willing to do that. But uh, but a lot of work has been done, wouldn't you say, Kevin? I mean, I <laughs> I had like 40 minutes to walk the other evening, and I parked right next to the old Towers restaurant and hopped across the street, and just going back through that piece of trail right in front of the elementary mm -hmm. school all the way back um there are little benches that you can stop and sit just a really lovely atmosphere to exercise ride your bike um walk whatever yeah and, there, and that that area is the start of the well it's the frog hollow trail mm -hmm. and and we have there would be something happening in that you know that little cove that that, that you when you're walking that's only a mile long so it's we need to make it longer for for it to be or you easily. walk back and forth four right. or five times but we want us to go through town that's going to end up coming around the train station coming up through town and coming across and going across uh, queen street there but um we're putting a um a memorial area there uh, of plaques of of uh, elected officials that passed away in office uh to be able to Memor uh, memorialize them in an area that is beautiful, quiet, just like you said, and serene. So that's that's been in the works for a few months. So you'll have, uh, you know, there, there'll be a, a, a plaque there for Harry Johnson and, and several other council people that passed away in office. Bill? Yeah. Uh, Kevin, we frequently hear in terms of Martinsburg, there is a weak 
meritorial system as opposed to strong. Obviously, we're not talking about you as an individual. <laughs> we're talking about the system. Would you explain that? Well, um, you know what, Bill, to be quite honest, I hate hearing that. Mm -hmm. uh, and, yes, you know what, if you want to be a weak mayor, you can be a weak mayor. You know, that's, that's how it's set up, that um, the um, city manager uh, runs the day-to-day -day and, and, and presents the, the mayor with the agenda, and whether the, the mayor agrees with it or not, uh, that's, it's his choice to be able to present that to council. Now, uh, me personally, um, I, I don't consider myself a weak mayor. Uh, I, I, I'm a mayor in a weak mayor system that uh, is very involved in a day-to-day -day process. Uh, you know, Ann and I speak several times a day, if not in front of one another on the phone. Uh, he keeps me abreast of everything that's happening within the city. Uh, any of the uh, businesses that come to town, I'm, I'm in the forefront. I'm meeting them. I'm shaking their hands, introducing myself, telling them that my background is business development. If there's anything that I can do as mayor uh, to help you along, as long as the, the guidelines that we have set forward are, are for you as they are for everybody else, I'll do whatever you can. And, and, and I, you know, feel free to call me if you feel like you're not getting the treatment that you think you should get. Uh, my involvement on, on a state level is uh, much, much higher than it has been in the past. I was the first uh, first uh, elected official in the city of Martinsburg since the 70s to be uh, president of the Municipal League. Uh, I am the first mayor from the city of Martinsburg to uh, represent the mayors in the West Virginia Municipal League and the Southern Municipal Conference, which allows me to interact and find out more information about how other cities work, so that we can, so that I can bring this back to the uh, the the administration to to be able to talk things out and move things forward. I did not realize I was hitting a sensitive area. So it's, uh, did I, you see me I, jump out of the chair? <laughs> yeah. Now I was talking about the uh, from the structural aspect more than anything else. Yeah, structure, structurally, it, it is set up that uh, you know the, the mayor the, the mayor te is technically a, a part time position. Uh, it's a part time pay. Uh, currently, it pays uh, six hundred dollars a month. So if anybody thinks that uh, an elected official in the city of Martinsburg is is making money on the time that they're there, that's they're they're totally wrong for the time that you're put in, just like any other position with council or anything. It's what you want to put into it and and the effort you put in. And I think you can see, just by over the last few years, uh, with the council that we have right now and everybody working together as a team, that we're working very very hard together to move this this city forward. And and I'm very proud to be able to be uh, leading that charge with the the individuals that are are working with the city right now. In Go ahead, Mayor. Uh, in terms of administration, you mentioned Andy Blake. Obviously, um, new, huh, he's not really the new city manager anymore, but um, you know he followed someone with um, with a long tenure, uh, and he was the assistant for a long period of time. One of uh, the folks on our stream, um, David Anderson, who's running for for um for council is asking will there be another assistant city manager at some point or well the the position is budgeted and uh it, that is uh that is something that uh andy blake and i have discussed and and he is he is going to take some time to see what roles can be uh that he can handle that 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 maybe not name it a, an assistant city manager but have some different type of role within the within the administration so that that is being looked at it's being evaluated and it's going to be looked at uh, somewhere six months down the road so that he has some time to identify the areas because you know mark did a great job mark did a wonderful job i can't speak more highly about mark baldwin mark was baldwin. in um <coughs> he was the city manager for Upwards 20, of 30? 30? 20, uh, to 27 years. 27 years. And uh, he, he did a fabulous job. And, and uh, you know, Andy, look what he did in Ranson. You know, I mean, uh, it was just a it was a no-brainer when it came time to Mark. I think, I think the transitioning part of having the uh, assistant city manager was the transitioning of Mark, knowing that, you know, he was later on in his, uh, in his tenure to be able to, to bring somebody in and bring him up to speed. And, and, and I can't tell you how proud I am to, to work with Andy Blake and, and the work that he does and the communication skills that he has to be able to, uh, to run the city. Kevin, you have an opponent in this election. Uh, what is your 45-second elevator speech of why someone should vote for you? 
Well, you know, you know, Bill, I, I've been doing this for since uh, 2012, and and you know, I'm, I'm I, I've proven in not only as as a city council and as a mayor that I can lead. Uh, I, I'm, I'm anybody that knows me knows how honest I am, and and uh, I've always said anywhere I've gone that my my phone number is a 24/7 number, so I'm very very approachable. Uh, we're very I'm very involved and engaged in the day to day process here within the city and. And, you know, I, I just want to continue to be able, I ask to be able to continue to do that and continue to bring the city forward in the fashion that it is right now. Kevin, uh, you will, uh, in the very near future, I understand it, be addressing first responders. We had a question yesterday for Corey Roman about a West Side fire station as a priority. Where is that in your next term as a priority? Right right now, uh, we there is conversation going on with a private entity about some land that we may be able to acquire, and he's, he's possibly going to donate that land to us to be able to identify a spot for this uh, future fire, uh, fire station, which is on uh, the west side uh, towards the entrance off of... Uh, uh, sort of um, off of uh, above Target there, the road above Target there, um, that is directly across from uh, the opening of uh, uh, the gallery and that. So, so we are we're doing some studies right now that to for that land for that individual to see if it's conducive to what we need and what we want to do. And it's a few acres that he's willing to that he's in discussion with us to donate to us to be able to put the fire. So we we're in the process of identifying property for that. The city has a 1% sales tax. The county would love to have a 1% sales tax uh, as well. But the reasons why counties aren't at the moment even being considered for home rule is because the legislature says when the city's got home rule and the 1% sales tax, they were supposed to roll back certain taxes like in Martinsburg would be the B&O. Mm -hmm. Has that been rolled back at all during your time as mayor? And if you should win re-election, is there any plan out there to roll it back to give businesses some tax relief while the 1% sales tax adds revenue to the city. We, we did roll, roll some back and eliminated some as when I was a councilman when we first uh, started the, uh, the, the, uh, the home rule. Um, I would love to see the counties have home rule also because it's been a huge success for us. I only ask that the counties don't put it on top of the, the cities throughout the state. But You mean uh, add another 1% to the correct, additional yeah, yeah. 1%? Already. So, I mean, uh, you know, that, that it's a huge help to be able to uh, uh, enhance your living in, in, in the area. For us, uh, you know, it was enabled us to do a lot of projects. Projects that we would not have been able to do if we didn't have that, and uh, such as uh, well, I mean, you look at the monies that we've been investing into the the Apollo, into the the Roundhouse, into different entities to be able to bring the downtown area up. We had a facade program that we had within the city. We've we've done. Um, uh, there's a page. There's a three page list of projects that are on the books that are either. Uh, Money have been put aside for that that haven't started yet, but but are, are moving forward. So we, but implied within Rob's question was uh, was there a one for one? If you got a one percent sales tax, did you roll back the MBO tax? That money? was not that was it? not how it was written. And if I, I tell everybody, read how it was written, written, and they, when they read it, they they can imply what they want. But the way it was written, we every city, every municipality followed the guidelines as it was written. If it was repealed, what would that do to the city's finances? Well, uh, it's over nine million dollars to uh, to take away the B and O tax. Uh, if you take that, so you know, nine million from a fifty-two million dollar budget. It's uh, if you're a businessman, uh, if you take uh, you know that that type of money away from your business, what happens? Uh, you're cutting back services. You're cutting back employees. Uh, let me let me just th throw something out there because this is always a question. Rob knows that it gets me sometimes, and but um, this the West Virginia Municipal League and the state um, uh, commerce uh, uh, chamber of commerce have put together. We've put together a team to to take a look at other ways to to make this work. So we're working uh, to try to find ways to. I don't like the B and O tax, but. To take it away and not to have anything in there, uh, it's not a one for one because your B&O tax is nine million, and and we get four four and a half million of uh, of um, 
a, a sales tax. So it doesn't doesn't match up. You know, you still have to make up that kind of money, and 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 for that to happen, uh, we need to have something to 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 replace that. So we're working close with the state uh, uh, chamber of commerce to be able to present and bring that to legislature if if that becomes a topic again. It wasn't a topic this year. Let's talk about parks. In uh, If you were to win another term as the mayor, or are there any new parks online that you're expecting? Well, um, I, I think that they're, they're, we are looking for uh, expanding some parks within the city because not every ward has a park. Uh, you know, I think Ward 2 might be the only ward that doesn't have a park within its ward. So we're always trying to identify, uh, you know, pocket parks for uh, individuals or for that area, for that ward. Uh, I think you're going to see, well, I know you're going to see, we're going to continue to move forward with the uh, the plans that were presented to us for CEC for the expansion project. We're going to take a look and see what we have to do, how we're going to uh, partner up or how we're going to find the finance to make that work. But uh, you're going to start to see that moving forward a little bit. Uh, so we're going to continue to enhance the parks within the city. Again, uh, we don't run Parks and Rec. Parks and Rec, uh, has they, they operate on our city property, and we work in conjunction with them whenever needed, and, and we have a great working relationship with them. So anything we can do to enhance our parks within the city footprint, we're going to continue to do. Are there any things, should you have another term as mayor, that you would hope to stop from happening in the city of Martinsburg that are currently getting some momentum? You, you know what, uh, I'd be hard pressed to find something that, that you know, uh, you know the, the negativity. I mean, there's the city of Martinsburg is a positive place, and if you take go back 2016, we were identified as Little Baltimore. Uh, we're not identified as Little Baltimore anymore because of the the, the opioid epidemic. We're, we're we're thriving and moving forward and rising up, and I, I think I think what I'd like to see is more people. Be more engaged and find uh, find out the facts before they they jump to conclusions and and the way to do that is you know like I said my number is twenty four seven I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna answer everything that you ask me but it may not be the answer that you want to hear but it's gonna be truth honest and forthwith um, that's all I could say is but but jump into conclusions and and talking negative about downtown and different parts of the city. Uh, it's just not going to it's not going to help what we're trying to do here and, and and uplift our city into a different different area. With the city in the position that it's in, in the growth and development, all of that, I'm going to ask the P question: um, Are is there adequate parking um, to accommodate um, all of the growth that that we see happening? So it, it, in 2008, when I first ran for city council, that was one of the things I ran on and. And I continue to, to, to think that we really need to start talking and doing uh, something to have a parking garage of some sort within the city, the downtown corridor. And those conversations happen all the time. We just don't bring them out public. So we would like to find, uh, anybody's listening, we would like to find a public-private partnership to be able to, 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 to have one of these garages. And just I'm going to use an example Buzz, I'm, I'm using an example. Just remember, I'm using an example. <laughs> you're, as a, you're an example. I'm not using you as a. Well, a anyway, I mean, if I take, I just came from Ocean Springs, Mississippi, and what they're doing in their downtown, I was like, that's what I want. You know, that's what I want. And what they did is they they built a hotel right in the downtown corridor with a parking garage, a, a nice parking garage next to it. Well, what makes that feasible is that. Anybody that's staying at that hotel is going to be paying a parking fee. So those you have you have revenue generated on a regular basis, so that that helps offset the cost that will cost. It. It's very very expensive to one build a parking garage, two to maintain it. Uh, if you take a look, Charles Charleston is auctioning off three of them. Why? You have City of Logan trying to sell the one they have. Why? Well, they they don't have the growth that we have. Okay, they did it one time. They needed them, so we're we're at we're actively Andy and I actively talk about it, and and we're trying to come up with some type of a of, of future plan for that to happen. It's gonna it, it's gonna happen. It has to happen. 
Kevin, final minute is yours. Your chance to talk to the voters out there in the city of Martinsburg and tell them why they should vote for you. Well, first of all, I, I want to thank the city council for um, having the faith in me when they appointed me the mayor for the last three years. The last three years of my life serving as mayor of Martinsburg has been nothing but a blessing for me. And I've able, been able to meet a lot more people outside of my ward and, and be able to interact with a lot of the business structure coming in to the city. And, and, and I feel that, that I've proven myself to not only the administration but to, to the current city council and other people that, that I'm the right man for the job. I, I believe that I'm, I'm the most qualified candidate for this position at this point. Uh, and I ask and, and hope that when you go out, whether it be early voting or on June 11th, that you consider me to continue to be the mayor of Lawrenceburg. Kevin, best of luck to you in the upcoming election. Thank you for spending this time with us this morning. Thank you.